Hi everyone, we're back coming to you live from the Las Vegas Convention Center for Recon 2017. I'm here with Michael O'Neill, Executive Director from New York, uh, the New York office. Mike, how are you doing today? Doing excellent, thanks for having me. All right, how's, uh, how's the conference been for you today? How's your first day going? It's, it's been good, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, as we all know, there's been uh, a significant amount out there surrounding the state of retail, uh, the challenges that we're all facing, a period of really transformation. Um, so I think candidly we came in um, with somewhat tempered expectations in terms of what the sentiment would be of both the retailers as well as the uh, landlords and developers. Um, at least in the first day I found it um, to be positive, albeit with the acknowledgement that we are in a challenging time. Mm -hmm. um, I think thinking about our experience throughout the day and the different meetings we had, there were really kind of three trends uh, that we saw consistently um, from a lot of the, the different landlords and retailers we were working with. Um, the first uh, involves the ability to adapt. Uh, I think that is that is a, a critical piece of the equation for any of the retailers today, and that's really adapting to um, a different consumer who has different behaviors than the than the one in the past. Um, the second, it really surrounds experience. Um, experiential retail is probably almost an, an overused term over the course of the last year or two, but it is absolutely a component that both landlords and developers are looking at to make successful mixed-use projects, uh, as well as retailers looking at in terms of um, how, to, how to bring people into the stores, how to keep them in the stores, and how to keep them coming back. Um, and really the third trend involves speed. Um, I think, you know, in the environment world we're living in today with Amazon Prime and, and a really a generation that expects everything immediately, it's how do you, um, how do you help fulfill um, and provide that either, you know, service or, or product as quickly as possible. Um, so those were kind of three trends we saw throughout the day. Interesting, interesting. And you know, that, um, that lends itself to um, the trend of e-commerce moving to bricks and mortar and you know, to having that pure player going down to experiential retail and showroom spaces and things like that. And I know that you just started working with Untuck It um, on their uh, e-commerce expansion to bricks and mortar. Do you want to talk about Untuck It and who they are? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Untuck It is, a, um, is really primarily a menswear brand, although recently introduced to women's line and, and um, children's will in all likelihood be following in the not too distant future. The um, uh, company was founded in 2010. Uh, men's shirts designed to be worn untucked. Um, they built really a, a tremendous following, um, primarily through marketing, advertising, um, big push through social media. Um, and after you know five years of really learning who their customer was, um, primarily, again, strictly through e-commerce, um, we worked with them to open their first store in Soho in um, September of 2015. Um, it was a tremendous success. Um, that store was subsequently uh, extended, um, and we've now been working very closely with them um, on a national expansion strategy. Where in Soho is their store located? Uh, it's at 129 Prince Street. Um, we actually just uh, recently completed um, their second uh, long-term transaction uh, in New York at 488 Madison Avenue. Um, we've been fortunate enough to uh, complete um, seven transactions with them nationally. Uh, again, really primarily major market focus, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco. Um, we also have another uh, four leases out. Um, and they are, again, an example of a company that found um, that one, being an e-commerce based business, they had a tremendous amount of information about who their customer was, right. how they behaved, and where they shop. Mm -hmm. um, so they were really able to utilize that information to make decisions relative to new markets and stores. So would you say that they even might have an advantage over other stores who started out as bricks and mortar and because they have that data already captured? Yeah, I, I think that's a it's that's a, it's a really good point. Um, and you know, when I go back to one of the common themes we've seen surrounding adapting, that is something that your traditional retailer that um, originated in a time where um, a digital profile and an online presence was not something that existed, they have to adapt to. Uh, when you're kind of going the other way, um, I think it's you, you do have kind of a competitive advantage in the environment we're in today. Interesting. So you said they're looking at um, other major cities across the U.S. When do you think, what's their target rollout time frame? Um, so by the end of 2017, uh, the plan is to have um, approximately 22 stores open throughout the U.S. Um, the, the expansion um, going forward is, has really not been fully defined, but 
uh, I can say that there is a um, there is certainly a big push um, for, for more stores in 2018 and 2019. You know, they, they have seen, um, and, and this is, you know, really for any of these companies, whether it's, you know, a pure play e-commerce company or a traditional retailer, the, the end goal is just to drive as many sales in whatever distribution channel that is, whether it's wholesale, whether it's e-commerce, or right. whether it's, it's direct to consumer at retail. Um, and they've seen, as many have before, a very positive correlation um, on the online sales, um, you know, once they started opening the retail sales. So effectively, they're just capturing kind of a, a bigger market share by, um, by executing the omni-channel strategy. Right, and that's interesting with the omni-channel strategy. It's almost like they don't. It doesn't matter where they make the sale anymore. It doesn't have to go to a store location. It doesn't have to necessarily be e-commerce. It's kind of, it's kind of more fluid now in terms of where that sale is made and how where it, where it originates from. Yeah, I think that's a distinct difference uh, in the way um, retailers are really looking at it today. At, at a point, there was almost internal competition within certainly some of the larger brands between e-commerce and retail. Now, I think there is absolute recognition that these need to be fully integrated strategies um, and ultimately all moving um, you know, towards, towards the same end. Yeah. So you were talking a little bit about the trends you were seeing at the show. I know right now there's a lot of talk about retail Armageddon and gloom and doom and what's going on in the market and, and how that's going to be affecting retailers down the line. Where do you see the market going um, in the next year to two years? I think we're, we're still going to have um, some, some challenging and, and a, a bit of a bumpy ride ahead of us. Um, unfortunately, I do not think we've seen um, the end of, of some of these bankruptcies, which have, have gotten a lot of press over the course of the last year or so. Um, so I, I do think we're, we're going to kind of navigate through a trying time. Um, but I also think, you know, I, I've seen and heard enough relative to new concepts, companies that are adapting, um, that will, you know, that will come out on, on the other side of this. I think um, in, a, in a kind of different and new reality, I mean, my personal belief is um, that, you know, retailers are still going to have, uh, you know, brick and mortar stores are still going to be a very important part of their strategy. Uh, in all likelihood, you know, one retailer will probably not have as many stores as they may have kind of contemplating having, you know, 10 years ago because it will be looked at as uh, an overall strategy. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, key markets, key cities, I think, you know, there's, there will certainly still be demand there um, and there will be an absolute need to have a presence in those markets. Right, right. That sounds, that sounds great. It's really very interesting. I'm excited to see uh, if your theories pan out. <laughs> Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's great. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me today and thank you guys for tuning in. And um, we have our client event tonight, yep. a reception at the Four Seasons, which we're really excited about. And we'll be back tomorrow at the booth with more live streaming interviews. Great. Thanks, Alana. Thanks so much. Thank you.